What's up guys, my name is Daniel and I am a nursing student. Wait, no. Right, what's up guys, if this is your first time here, my name is Daniel. I am a new grad nurse based out in Southern California and in this video, we are gonna be going over how to pass the ATI Comprehensive Predictor. If you go to my school, which was, <laughs> was, wow, which was West Coast University, um, you would know that for this test, you need to get a 72% raw score on this exam to graduate. And I wanna start off with a small disclaimer here. What worked for me might not work for you. Everyone has different study strategies, guys, and I completely understand that, but in, I'm just gonna be sharing what helped me. Um, a lot of people have been asking me, how did you study for capstone? You're gonna be having weekly assignments on ATI capstone, ATI body, um, and those are the required uh, required um, assignments. Now, take those seriously because that's what I did to get a high score on my comprehensive predictor. Um, and also make sure to study off of this pink book, guys. In my school, how it works is you're, every week you're gonna be covering a certain topic. So say week one, you're gonna be covering farm, pharmacology, because you're also gonna be doing pharmacology proctored, which is another story. If you want me to make a video on that, let me know. Um, you're also going to be given some practice questions from your professor. They were really good practice questions. He gave us a ton, guys. And my goal in doing that is to study the rationales um, for everything that you got right and everything you got wrong. Now, keep in mind of everything you get wrong first, okay? Because that is where you're going to prioritize here. So um, the reason why you want to start there is because if you have 10 weeks um, and you have to cram everything you've ever learned in nursing school, in those 10 weeks, you do not want to spend a lot of your time on something you're already strong in. Um, there's no point in doing that. Don't do that to yourself. Um, make a whole list. I called it the I don't know list. And basically in that list, what you're going to do is place every topic that you are not clear of and come back to that list every single week. Say you are on pediatrics and you do not remember for the life of you, vital signs because everyone knows that vital signs and peds are completely different if that is a point that you're struggling in you want to know what your vital signs for peds are so you're gonna go back to your pink book find the sign find the page that had the peds vital signs and put it on your i don't know list you're gonna make that list go back to it really remediate um on those and then what you want to do after that, guys, is get a study partner and teach them what are the abnormal vital signs to look for and to report to the provider if you see them on a pediatric patient. Now, in this remediation of yours um, for your practice questions and making your I don't know list, you want to either write them out on a whiteboard right there or on an iPad or on a piece of paper or whatever it is. Really write down everything about it. Write down um, interventions, write down what to look for, what, what to alert the provider for. Um, you, you want to be able to know these things for your test, guys. Also, what you can alternatively do are flashcards. Uh, people like to do flashcards sometimes. It helps with fast memory, especially when it comes to farm, even the vital signs, lab values. The benchmark that you kind of want to hit when you're doing these assignments is a 60%. Now, a 60% is basically a good, a good indicator of uh, your readiness level in that particular uh, topic. Um, so for peds, for OB, etc. It basically means that you are ready enough to answer the questions that are gonna be asked on the comprehensive predictor and or the NCLEX. More on that in a future video, but we're talking about the ATI Comp Predictor today. If you're struggling to get a 60% guys in uh, any of these assignments or practice questions or practice tests, definitely reach out to your academic advisor. They will be able to help you out with study strategies, be able to analyze uh, anything that you might be struggling on or what you might be, and they will guide you to the right direction on your study plan. Now, when it comes to the pink book, I went through one entire pass of material, meaning I read this from cover to cover, did the practice questions that you have in there, and I also referenced it back and forth for the I don't know list that I was mentioning earlier in the video. 
So everything you need to know for that exam, basically, for the most part, majority of the part, maybe like 85% is going to be in this book. The rest of it, most likely, if you don't know, or there's not enough information on here, and you'll find that there's not enough information on here for some things, um, it's going to be in the other ATI books. Another point I want to make in doing these reviews is make your own mnemonics. It's going to make help make these nine weeks of studying as tolerable as possible. These can be as ridiculous or um, as clean as you want them to be. It definitely helped me and my study partner like get this uh, some topics down. Study groups, study partners, they're, very, they're optional. Some people can uh, study completely all alone by themselves and that's fine. Honestly for me, I wish that I could have done this much sooner in this term especially or even as soon as I started nursing core. That's exactly what I did. You're going to be reviewing all of those rationales, right and wrong, from your practice exams, your practice questions, your weekly assignments, making your I don't know list, and then you want to be prioritizing all the things that you do not know too well. But also don't forget about your strong things, just don't spend too much time on them. And lastly, I will talk about and shout out some resources that I have found helpful right over here. Steph Beck's Simple Nursing, Mark K. I didn't watch all of that 12 hours, but some of it was helpful in my review. <laughs> don't use too many resources, guys. That's going to kind of confuse and overwhelm you if you have so many resources. Um, but yeah, comment down below if you have finished the Comprehensive Predictor. What has helped you the most when it comes to studying and passing? Did you use a pink book or did you not use a pink book? Let me know down below. We can all help each other out in this, in this channel to do well. I want everyone who watches my videos to have some type of value. If this is your first time here, I have more videos, helpful videos in this playlist right over here to help you throughout your nursing journey if you are just starting. Um, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Remember to be yourself, love yourself, and do what makes you happy. Peace out, guys.